Hello everyone and welcome back to the topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is the need for control. Or just control, really. How does this affect us? Why do we have this urge and need to be in control all the time? Because we think that being in control equals keeping us safe, keeping us protected. But sometimes it actually doesn't and it does a lot more damage, especially to the people around us because we then have this need to control our environment, right? Which is everything around us, which also includes people. And that can become quite abusive. So why do we have this need for control and uh, how does it affect us? So it tends to start in childhood. Let's say your parents had a lot of arguments. They didn't have a very healthy relationship and you overheard a lot of those arguments. What did you feel in that moment? The child felt helpless, powerless, out of control, scared, fearful, sad, all of these feelings. So what does that do? Repeatedly, if you continuously have a situation like this, that child feels helpless, it feels out of control. That makes an imprint in your subconscious mind, in the child's mind. What can happen then as an adult is that they will have that constant urge to be in control. How can that come out? How does that, how does that show up in our lives? Well, actually, anger is a need for control. So when you're angry, what that person is actually going through is deep, profound pain. And it tends to be from an old wound from childhood and that you may have just triggered. That's why they get angry. But it's actually so much easier to get angry because then you're in control, right? You're screaming, you're shouting, even though you're actually completely out of control. You, in your mind, when you are angry and frustrated and raging and raving, you feel like you're in control. It's so much easier than to be sad and emotional and crying your heart out and feeling deep, dark depression. Rather just get angry and that way you feel like you're sort of in control. So next time you're around someone who is angry, see them as an individual who is hurt and be aware of that. I'm not saying don't keep yourself safe because do keep yourself safe. Be very clear with your boundaries. Remove yourself from that situation if you possibly can. And if not, speak in a calm manner, in a calm way, because this person isn't actually angry. It's just their coping mechanism is actually just deep, profound hurt. But actually, that need for control can come out in so many different ways. I have had clients with anorexia, bulimia, OCD, addictions, anger, and so much more that have this, the cause for all of these issues was actually the need for control. And it's because we're living all of these issues that we have, they're actually just issues that were, that were triggered when we were, when we were children. They were imprinted in our subconscious mind when we were little innocent children and we didn't know any better. But right now we are not children. We are grown ups. We are adults and we need to let go of those old beliefs, those old memories that are actually harming us. I'm not saying let's eliminate all your memories from your childhood. No, it's, it's breaking those old beliefs that you got from those memories. That's really what it is because it's beliefs that are causing you all of these issues that are causing you to feel this anger, this hurt, this, this, this need to control everything and everyone around you. What we actually want is to be at peace. We want to be balanced. We want to feel aligned. And if your life and everything is in harmony, then you won't have that need for control. And if you have open wounds from your childhood that weren't dealt with, that weren't spoken about, that weren't healed, how can you ever feel like you're in control? You'll always seek that, that need, that need, I need to control everything because I actually feel completely out of control. And that's really it. It's that deep down we haven't healed those wounds and we still feel like we're out of control because deep inside us, there's that, still that little child with all those memories, with all those imprints, and those wounds haven't been healed. And that's why you may feel like you're consistently out of control, especially in certain situations where you, those wounds get triggered. How can we remove that? How can we become these beautiful, balanced, aligned, balanced, uh, peaceful, I've already said that, peaceful individual, patient individuals? Well, 
one of the incredible techniques is RTT and the process is, is so beautiful, especially with men actually, because I have a lot of male clients. I have both women and men. Um, and with male clients, I've noticed that we know, right, that boys don't cry, um, you, being vulnerable means weakness. All of those things were ingrained in, in you boys and then you developed it into men and you had to repress your emotions. You were called sensitive or other horrible, horrible ways when you showed your emotions or when you even, even when you cried. And that is such, such unfairness. It's actually such an injustice that, that we do, that we ingrain our boys, oh, don't cry, don't be like a girl, don't, you know, all of those things. It's, it, it's horrible and it's unfair because it actually harms these little boys who then become men and they, they're not able to express their pain and then they hold it all in and then they develop physical pains and all sorts of other issues. So the process of an RTT session is wonderful because you get to get hypnotized and get to go into a really relaxed and peaceful state, which you go naturally into as you're going to sleep and as you're waking up. So hypnosis isn't voodoo, it, it isn't magic, it's science, and it, you're, it's just a brainwave that you're going into, which you naturally go into anyway. You will develop this beautiful, peaceful feeling, and we will regress you back to the cause of the lack of control or that need to control everything, whatever that issue may be for you. And then we will go back to scenes and memories of your childhood and find out what, what actually happened in your childhood that caused you to have these, this pain, this wound. We will then end those old beliefs that will come up because every memory, every scene created a belief within you. We will end them because they don't serve you anymore. And then we're going to reconnect you with your inner child. And I actually love doing this. It's one of my favorite techniques. You will speak to the little version of you. And this sounds quite simple. And it, and it is. But it's so powerful when you do it in hypnosis. Because you are bonding with this little child that was hurt, that was harmed, that was powerless, that was out of control. And you, as your adult version, can make them feel safe. You're the only one that can play that loving role of a parent because you're the only one who truly knows what you need to hear, what you need to feel. And you're giving that little child, which is the little you, safety, comfort, and all of the things that it's always needed and that it may have not gotten from your parents. So you're going to become the loving parent to the little version of you and you'll be fully reconnected. And then we're going to ingrain and reprogram, rewire your subconscious mind with positive, powerful, life-changing new beliefs, the beliefs that you feel are going to help you in life. After the session, I will make you a personalized hypnotic audio with all your new beliefs, everything that your life is going to look like, how you're going to feel, how you're going to respond to certain people. And you will listen to that recording every single day for 28 days. And that, with the repetition, will ingrain those new beliefs into your subconscious mind without fail. Whilst you do this in those 28 days, you will have weekly coaching calls with me, which is all included. And it's absolutely brilliant because if there's ever anything that you need any guidance, you can always call me, WhatsApp me. And uh, in between, we have that constant contact. So you're never left on your own. It's just session and then we're done with. No, I will guide you through that whole journey. And I love doing this. This is literally my dream job. I love what I do and I do what I love. And it's a dream come true because it's healed me. It's healed so many people around me, so many of my patients. And I'm so grateful for RTT because if it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't be here right now. So I have so much gratitude. And actually gratitude is the most amazing feeling to have. Being appreciative in the moment you wake up in the morning. Be grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful for my soft bed. I love the smell of my pillows. Oh, I love how soft my pajamas are. Even if it sounds stupid, it doesn't really matter because you're in that gratitude. And the universe or cosmos or the divine or whatever you may call it is going to give you more of that and shower you with positivity. And it also makes you grateful for the little things in life, for the water you drink, for the air you breathe. It just automatically and naturally puts you in a good mood. 
So try that next time you're feeling a little bit off, start saying all the things you're grateful for. Look at something that you are grateful for, even if it's a picture or a chair and you say, I love that chair. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's silly. If it brings you out of a negative feeling, do it. So I invite you to go to my website, leliahypnosis.com. I also provide a lot of uh, hypnotic audios, which are very powerful, especially for children because they are highly suggestible. And uh, I would love to be in contact with you. I'd love to have you as my client. I am always here for you. You can find me on Facebook and on Instagram, Lelia Hypnosis. And my phone number is on there. So if you want to give me a call or book a free call on my website, then I invite you to do so. So I'm sending you so much love and so much light, so much kindness and have the most magical, wonderful day. Big kiss. Bye.